after a couple of weeks of me being in Israel and not being able to do an Israel update because I was in Israel, uh, we're back. And it is Anok Young live back from the Mount of Olives. And before we get this amazing update from what's happening in Israel, I've heard that there's birthdays. You know, just when you thought it was safe to forget the whole birthday announcement thing, it's that time again. So, da 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 da. You say it's your birthday. So, okay, I'm a, first of all, I'm guilty. My youngest, Kira, had a birthday earlier this month. I never mentioned it. Oh. Now, she doesn't listen, but I should have mentioned it. Sure. So, her birthday is May 5th, which is also Cinco de Mayo. And on the Hebrew calendar that year was Lagba Omer. This year, it happened to fall out on Yom Ha'atzma'ud, our Independence Day. I mean, this kid's got all the holidays going. Amazing. I tell you, okay. I tell you that, that very famous holiday in which the ship that was carrying mayonnaise sunk. That was a bad one, right? That was bad. I know. Okay. Hey. Uh, thank you, have, my, uh... have a... Okay. <laughs> okay. My, my sources may be a little off, but today, I believe, is Marky Connor's 14th birthday. Oh. Happy birthday, Marky. All right. Yeah, and for her birthday, it seems all nine of her sisters have gotten together and they're helping her go to Israel this year on the Connect Israel tour. I heard something about. Okay. Now, for those of you movie fans who know of the heroine Sarah Connor, our Sarah Connor is turning 17. Unbelievable. I just remember when she was, I don't know, 16. So, <laughs> boom. It's all happening. Also, Noah Connor has a birthday. Now, our audience is totally unfamiliar with who Noah is, but that's going to have to wait to another day. There you go. So, yeah, this, this, they're just, there are just so many of them. Yeah. Now, right now, right now, our dear friend, Rosie, is sitting there saying, are they going to mention my birthday? And Rosie, it doesn't fall into this update. It's next week. Y'all going to have to wait a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay. Now, okay. jumping into things. One of the things that I'm most famous or infamous for saying is, y'all got to stop making stuff up. And I've got two wonderful entries into that category. One of them involves a very, very famous Hebrew roots teacher. Now, I have spoken about this person by name in the past. I'm not going to do that now. I'm not even going to mention the state that he's in, which clearly, from what I'm about to share with you, is the state of confusion. I'm not going to mention it. Okay. Someone sent me something that this guy spoke about. And he goes into great length explaining that Israel is about to strike Iran, like, like imminently, any day now. Now, for those of you who know anything at all about American politics and the Biden administration and their deals with Iran, the likelihood of Israel striking Iran now falls in the statistical category of slim and none. Okay. But this guy's proof is that he said, here in Israel, the government is instructing people to clear out their bomb shelters and is testing the warning sirens. And this is when I just have to call someone out for slinging fertilizer on their recordings. Mm -hmm. Now, trust me, I have been here when the government did instruct us to do that. Yes. 
And the last time was last May, 2021, when 4,500 missiles struck Israel mm -hmm. in 11 days. By the way, and it started on Yom Yerushalayim, Jerusalem Reunification Day, which is this coming Sunday, which yes. in case you're wondering, and by the way, of course, there's the flag march in the old city, and guess who's guiding in the old city <laughs> on Sunday? That would be moi, yeah. Okay, so I'm really frustrated with this guy for just making up stuff. And it really riles people up. A number of years ago, Israel was facing off with the terrorists of Hamas in Gaza. That was one of the times that we did not send ground forces in. But someone was circulating this big thing saying, Israeli ground forces have been to Gaza. Troops are streaming into Jerusalem to receive the blessing of the chief rabbi. Anyone who knows anything at all about Israel knows that our chief rabbi, we actually have two of them, is only the chief rabbi for those who want them to be True. the chief rabbi. Of. True. Okay, we have no pope. Our soldiers would laugh if they were bussed into Jerusalem to be blessed. I mean, it's just, it's so, yeah. but people just make stuff up. Now, that's not the best one. I met some people recently who shared with me that a pastor that they deal with very closely was explaining to them that the issues going on on the Temple Mount currently is just smoke and mirrors because the current government of Israel, this is not one person they're talking about, but the current government of Israel is actually planning to begin any day now the rebuilding of the third temple. Oh yeah, the temple I saw now. that. And you know, I don't, Mike, I, I don't know what we could possibly say to get people to actually read and think I mean, on the one hand, I'm grateful that that person on Facebook, who I've never met, sent me this recording and said, is, is this true? I want to, and, and her point was, I want to pray for the right things, mm -hmm. which, was, which was lovely, which was absolutely lovely. So that's absolutely beyond confusing. Um, and I think, you, let, let me stop you right there right. to... You know, there, there's so much out here these days, and it's not just Israel, Hanuk. it is all over the world regarding, uh, you know, the, the fake news media, uh, and it's, it's just, the things, things take on lives of their own. I remember years ago, uh, I can't remember what year it was, but there was a, some kind of a news, and this is back before Facebook, and so on email, there was this, uh, this email going around that up on the Golan Heights, that it must be the, the time of Armageddon because the vultures had been uh, propagating at such a high level that it was, they were so thick in the air that it was actually blocking out the sun. Now, you and I have been together at Tagamla and it's like we're standing there going, yeah. okay, is there a vulture anywhere? Uh, oh, yeah, there's one, and, and there's one. It's like the sighting of the moon. Yeah. It's like yeah. the sighting of the moon. Yeah. Is that crazy. it? Yeah. So, you know, kudos to the person that emailed you or Facebook or sent a carrier pigeon, whatever, uh, to say, Hanok, is this true? I, I think that we yeah. need to have more people that you know before reacting and reposting and sharing and all those things you know find find some sources and ask is this true uh because there's so much out there that is yeah it's really it's really really amazing um you know it, it's uh, if you've been following you know for those of our listeners who've been following the israeli news it sounds like 
the stability of our government is kind of doing the hokey pokey. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, one day someone resigns and, oh, it looks like there'll be a new elections, but then they, you know, change their mind back and forth. Don't get distracted by this yeah. stuff. Life goes on. You know, meanwhile, a lot of things are happening. Uh, a lot of good things are happening. Tourism is off the hook. It is, I mean, the question is, will it su sustain itself? Mm. Because everyone that was held back from coming in 2020 and 2021 has shown up in the last three months. Mm. Including me. By the way, yeah. <laughs> including you but you know I, I do have to say i have this i may have mentioned this before i've got this really long list of people who swore to me the moment israel opens up they're going to be here mm -hmm. and since you came and convinced my government to stop this nonsensical testing and quarantine at the airport it's so much easier now the irony is do you remember when people were losing their minds because they thought we in Israel were, you know, we're, we're, we're like chaining people up and locking GPS tracking on them and anything? So the bottom line is you can come to Israel and you don't need a test. You don't need a certificate. All you need to do is be able to pay for your airfare. And yeah. since hopefully people have been saving for two years. Now, on the other hand, if, if, if someone, if an Israeli wants to go visit the United States of America as a tourist, mm -hmm. he or she needs to be vaccinated. He or she needs to be vaccinated. That's American law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bizarre. You know, I, I have some distinctions of a few things in my life. One of them is I have in my passport, uh, one of the, actually it was the first um, visa to be given, this is back in 2013, I think it was, uh, the first visa to be given, the reenactment of a kibbutz visa from many years earlier yes. so that we could go over to Israel and work. So I have that. I also have the distinct privilege of being one of the last people that had to go through the PCR testing to get into Israel because they deleted that a few days after I uh, after yeah. I, I got mine, but uh, it, it's all behind us, okay? It, as, long, as long as, like, like right now, it's all behind us. So yeah, people should be making plans to go. Uh, hello, there's so many things that are going on in Israel. I want to touch, first of all, sure. on this, uh, this Palestinian journalist that was, yes. uh, was killed. Now, I, I just was looking at the news reports that say it's virtually impossible that the IDF actually shot this person and it was instead from a Palestinian bullet. Um, of course. You know, basically it comes down to this. If you side with Israel, you're going to say, no, it wasn't the IDF. If you don't side with Israel, it is the IDF. There's, there's no way, nobody's going to be changed. No. You could have ballistics and nobody would change their mind on this thing. No, but I, I, I have an interesting um, set of information to share in, in addition. First of all, I was in Beit Lechem, Bethlehem on Monday. And there's a huge poster of her. It, it's about three stories of a, of a big building about you know, how she was killed for, okay, yeah. In the 10 year period, let's say 1990 to 2000, um, close to 3000 journalists were killed around the world. In Iraq, in Afghanistan, recently in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. This is a fairly common thing. If people are shooting at each other and you stick your head up, chances are you're gonna get a bullet in the back of the head. That's just, and it's happened. But this time, again, because you can indict Israel, it becomes a big thing. Oh, yeah. So it, it's, 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 and this is not going to go away. If, if she slipped in the bathtub and hit her head, it would be because a Mossad assassin, you know, 
you know, went went and did it. So it's 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 it doesn't even pay to 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 talk about it. It really yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Now the fascinating one to me though is this. Uh, you know, in Israel, it's so funny in Israel that uh, you're you're looking for something and you find something else. You know, yes. it's like the infamous story of the person that uh, had a little bit too much lachaim uh, down in Tamar years ago and ended up finding a Roman aqueduct. You know, it's just what happens. In lachaim. <laughs> it's funny. I think that's lamaim. Yeah. Um, but uh, so they they try to find, they're, they're researching how to take these salinas, I desalinate water that's taken the salt out take of take the salt out of the water yeah yeah and um and and so now they're going to figure out how to put that into the galilee into the canaret and maybe that would be able to uh you know actually fill the the dead sea back up a little bit but in doing so they find a hasmonean period farm really Yeah, only only twenty one hundred years old. Yeah, it, it is amazing. And what's funny is, I really look forward to going with you and our connect peeps uh, to the Galil to the Kinneret, because one of the things that you see now is you see it looks like plants growing out of the water. Mm -hmm. The people I was guiding said, "How do you guys have plants growing out of the water?" Mm -hmm. A year and a half ago, that was all dry. Yeah. That was that had dried up. It was an amazing feeling being on a full canary. It was, it was, it really like my head almost blew up. It was amazing. Yeah, really amazing. You've never been on the canary when it was full, have you? No. See, I remember uh, back in 2004, I think it was, uh, we were on. The canary and it had gone down below red line and they had you know moved the red line down 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 and then it it was well, the same down, thing yeah. it filled up and uh you know you're right it, it, these plants are just growing out of the water uh those were trees <laughs> that were on dry land just not too long ago it's 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 amazing i am so thrilled that our connect group is coming to me, it seems imminently. Now, the reality is I'll have the opportunity to see many of them in the next month, month and a half, with you know, with you know, my little my little foray to the US. Uh oh, you know, by the way, you know, I really shouldn't say this on air. Um, but maybe we shouldn't mention to Christy that Sarah is now going to be the age where she could practically, you know, volunteer for the IDF. Uh, you know, we, we, you know, we really shouldn't talk about that. Yeah. You know, I, you know, so, so, so don't tell Christy. Okay. So yeah. this is going to be <laughs> like a bit You're, while. You yeah. dig your own holes, buddy. I'm not, no. I'm not even, no, I'm not getting in that hole with you. Okay. Um, no. No. But they're, they're, okay. But let's look at this as a reality, Hanok, that, um, you know, the for in Israel, every young man, every young girl goes in the idea. It's it's a yeah, reality. Um, unless um, unless they've got a series of cop outs of being Haredi, ultra orthodox, yeah. or being a pacifist, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, really when someone says, "Well, I'm pacifist. I can't serve." You know, they, what they want to do is like, you know, go into high tech and start making a fortune. Yeah. I really want to take them and slap them, keep slapping them because they're a pacifist. They're not supposed to fight back. I re and I need the practice. I really need to hit somebody soon. Of course you um, do. I probably will have the opportunity in the Muslim quarter on Sunday for Yom Yerushalayim, Jerusalem yeah. Day. Hey. You know, I've been, I've been in Israel for, I believe, all the festivals um i've been in israel for independence day for you know the various things but i gotta tell you hello my favorite time being in israel is jerusalem day. this is the most amazing time 
the the uh, the people come from all over the country, and I think that this year, being you know the on the aftermath of COVID, is probably going to be even crazier. But I, I remember being there uh, a number of years ago, and having to fight my way through the crowds of young people that had come from Tel Aviv, from the Galilee from the Golan, from, you know, everywhere in Israel. And they, they were all draped. They had themselves draped in, in Israel flags. And it was just yeah, amazing. Yeah, that's a big thing here. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's, I, um, I guided in the Kotel tunnels, the Westfall tunnels this morning. And uh, my first group was a group of four pastors uh, and their wives from Colorado. Hmm. And as you know, I'll be going back to Colorado to our dear friends, Bill and Rebecca Smith soon. And um, I was sharing with them about the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. And, you know, I, and then because it was a small group, I got off sidetracked in talking about how significant the temple was in Yeshua's life and his Jewish practice. And I think I pushed that envelope about as far as it could go. <laughs> First of all, the fact that I kept referring to Yeshua as Yeshua. Yeah. And, and you know, then I'd say, you know, and they're like, did you, did, did you mean Jesus? So, <laughs> uh, okay. But again, his mother, his Talmudim, his students, all called him Yeshua. I guess yeah. if you guys want to call him Jesus, you know, it's not it. So yeah, it's I, I never read that book, How to Make Friends and Influence People. What can I do? You know, there's never been a moment in my life if I, that I wondered if you had read that book. As someone said to me very nicely, I love this quote about myself. You know, Hanoch, you're really a zealot. But you're not quite everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> I, 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 I would guess, probably say, you know, not everyone's a gallon of vinegar or something like that. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah like I'm just a, I guess I'm just a sweet tea. What can I tell you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but but it was amazing. Sit, you know, meeting someone randomly the other day who had gone to Hayovel with her family mm -hmm. repeatedly and actually knew you, and yeah. she was shocked that I knew about Hayovel because I I looked at her daughter, who I think was sixteen now. This was years ago when she was there, and I asked if she had to wear a little bonnet like Laura Ingalls, Little House on the Prairie. So they thought that was really funny. It's like, mm -hmm. I knew all the inside jokes. Yeah, that's true. Well, some of them we haven't told you about. Uh, oh, you know, the, about whole, the whole thing with Hayabell, and I know you're going to be going up there pretty soon to the mountain. And uh, I have yeah. actually put in a good word for you. And uh, I've, I've tried my best to, to do what I can to make you feel welcome up there. But uh, there's some well, amazing yeah, things. By the way. If you could send them a message, because the group that I'm going up with is scheduled for dinner. <laughs> and the last time their version of kosher food was a bag of bomba that they had for me. Yeah. So, you know, like, I don't know if it's, you know, Josh or whoever's in, you know, in charge, but, you know, I, I don't do well. I don't do well when I miss my feedings, you know, what yeah, can I I'm tell you? I'm going to work on that. Maybe they can find you some uh, hummus and uh, and yeah. some pita bread or something like that. Yeah, and you jelly. Know? Yeah, <laughs> and jelly. Yeah. yeah, peanut butter and jelly on hummus. <laughs> uh, that's kind of the, that's one of the staples of IML. Uh, yeah. So Jerusalem Day. Um, what I mean, looking into, you're going to be there in the city. Um, the flag parade is has been ordered again off again it's it's on again now is that right yeah yeah and this is again it was for the flag parade the the march 
last year that was the excuse for Hamas to begin firing the missiles. Mm -hmm. That's when all the fun and games began. Mm -hmm. um, now, yeah. now, Hanok, uh, I, I talked to a number of people. It appears that there is that Israel is in the third intifada, the third uprising, but it's not being publicized as such in the media in order to try to keep, kind of keep it under under wraps a little bit. Would you agree with that? You know, when you were here and you mentioned that to me, you know, I kind of thought, well, you know, there's something to it, but there is no comparison. Mm -hmm. There is no comparison when during the, what we know of as the Oslo War and to most of the world was the Second Intifada. Yeah. I kind of remember buses were blowing up every other day mm -hmm. i mean it was relentless now the thing that's different is our army police and special forces are constantly combing throughout judea and samaria and every day you know i don't know if our, our listeners you know pick up on this but every day they're picking up more suspects more mm -hmm. wanted terrorists um, so we're we're really taking it. I mean, the very why was the why was the IDF in Janin to begin with? Yeah. Because of terrorists there. That's the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. You know, when I was uh, driving around up there, is uh, interesting because both mornings that I came down from Harbor Ka, the Mount of Blessing, to you know go to different places, I noticed the IDF. Uh, Normally they're standing there and they've got their rifle, of course, and it's in their hand and, you know, it's, it's finger out like this and they're kind of holding it down. And I noticed both mornings, uh, specifically the second one, that as I'm driving by the checkpoint there with the IDF behind the concrete barriers, I'm actually getting flashed by the sun hitting the rifle scope. Yeah, uh, that was slightly unnerving to me, you know. But this is yeah. the tension that is there, where we had uh, we saw both at Tapoa Junction and Harbor Ka Junction, right yes. there at the base, uh, with going into Shkem, that there were you know that there were uh, thwarted attacks. Yeah, this is we. Um we're taking a far more aggressive stance mm -hmm. than occurred at all during all the years of the reign of King Bibi Netanyahu the um, first. And, and, and by the way, all of the issues of lawlessness and the Bedouin in the, in the Negev stemmed from those 12 years that he ruled with benign neglect, just, mm -hmm. you know, absolutely paid it no attention and that it's a big problem in our society that we're trying desperately to overcome mm -hmm. um you you still see um young combat soldiers doing joint patrols with our border police in jerusalem uh tremendous show of force and you know it, it, it's interesting guiding these day tours for tourist israel from time to time uh, because like there was a guy from San Francisco. Well, first of all, he got his nose out of joint when I asked him, oh, we're from America's West Bank. He said, well, we don't call it that. I said, well, we don't call it that either. Nah, 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 nah. He could not understand. He saw three women border police um, officers. And he's like, why are these women carrying guns? I said, there are police. I said, do the police not have weapons in San Francisco anymore? What do they have, flowers? I, don't, I have no idea. But I then, two days later, was guiding a couple from the UK as part of the group. And the woman kept saying how upset she was seeing so many young people with weapons. Because they saw a guy, cut off shorts, you know, muscle t-shirt, flip-flops yeah. with the magazine in just you know just you know run it kind of running down the street you know looking yeah. for his girlfriend so like why is he carrying like well be, be, because 
you know, and I, I said to her, I said, you come from a society where your police don't have firearms. We live in an area where people want to kill us. Yeah. You know, why is it, you know, the, the, the horrific shooting yesterday in Texas broke my heart, as it did to many people, of course. But again, remember, every Israeli school has an armed guard. It is not unusual for our teachers to have weapons. Yeah. No school trip occurs without an armed escort. Oh, yeah. No school trip anywhere. You can go to Ain Getty. Yeah. So I, know. I, I, I don't understand. And of course, no. Well, let's, oh, but the other thing is, <laughs> I'm guiding someone the other day, and um, we went up to the Galil, and uh, we had two day trips, and the cost of gas for the van for those two days was 100 shekels. So he almost had a heart attack. So I explained, and, and, and you know, I said, gas is very expensive here. So he starts doing this, Biden. Biden. I said, no, no, no. Our gas has been the equivalent of $8 a gallon for many years. Has oh, nothing yeah. to do with Biden. Has yeah. nothing to do with Trump. We had no Keystone pipeline. Nothing, yeah. nothing. You yeah. know, listen, there's a lot to blame Sleepy Joe for, but not Israel's, you know, gas prices. Yeah, it's it's been $7, $8 as, as far back as I can remember. Yeah. Uh, you know, for 20 it's years, it's been that much. I, Yeah, I ran around... Uh, I ran around the Samaria region for a couple of days and it was 60 bucks of gas. But, you know, I, um, I was just glad I didn't have to walk. I was glad that you didn't have to walk. And I was thrilled that you were able to be here, Mike. Yeah. And you know what? Udi feels the same way. I know Dov Kapinski does. I didn't get a chance to ask Moshe, but I'm assuming he does too. Yeah, it was a great time. It was a great time. And uh, looking forward to being back in the land, uh, Bezran Hashem, in October, November. So, well, Hanok, uh, take care of yourself, and we will yeah, talk then, next so, week. Yes, we, have... we, we can talk next week. Um, and then I have a feeling the next update we may do would be in Franklin. Franklin, okay. Franklin, do, 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 do. It's coming up. Okay, well, coming we will, uh, I will coming alert up. Kaya. I'll, I will alert Kaya that you're going to be here so she can put on her best barking voice. That's right. Please okay. do. All right. Regards. Take care. Shalom. Bye-bye.